Hi, I'm standing in front of the Betts and Mills Club where Vice President of the United States Charles Gates Dawes was born. The Betsy Mills was founded in 1911 under the same name, the Girls Monday Club. The Monday Club was the result of a sewing class started in 1898 in Marietta by Mrs. Betsy Mills and other community-minded women. The first permanent home of the Monday Club was the white frame house on the corner of 4th and Putnam Streets. The house was the birthplace of Mrs. Mills and also of her nephew, Vice President Charles Gates Dawes. The home was donated by Mr. and Mrs. West William Mills in 1916. The home became the nucleus of the present complex constructed by Mr. Mills as a memorial to his wife. The Betsy Mills, as you see it today, was dedicated on June 13, 1927, and donated by Mr. Mills to the community of Marietta. I'm inside the Betsy Mills Club now where Vice President Charles Gates Doss was born here in this room, August 27, 1865. And as we can see over here, it's a photo. Charles Gates Doss is standing all the way to the left. He's actually standing next to then U.S. President William Howard Taft. This photo was taken on June 15, 1910. President Howard Taft is actually receiving a honorary degree of Doctor of Civil Laws from Marietta College President Dr. Alfred Tyler Perry. This occasion was commemorating Marietta College's 75th anniversary. Well, I'm standing in front of the Henry Fearing House. This is where Vice President Charles Gates Doss courted his wife, Carol Blymer Doss. Let's go ahead and go inside. Well, uh, my primary interest here is any information you may have to give in regard to uh, Vice President Charles Gates Doss in connection with his home, of course. Oh, okay, good. Well, let's start here with this picture then. Charles Gates Dawes mm -hmm. was born in Marietta and grew up here. Yeah. And, and we'll start with a picture of his his family. And his con this is he, Charles Gates Dawes, is a young married man with his wife and and first child. Hmm. And with is that Carol Blymer? That's right. Uh huh. Cairo Blymer. It's is C A R O Cairo Blymer. Hmm, okay. These are Mr. and Mrs. Blymer, Cairo's parents here. Okay. Mrs. Blymer, in turn, was the daughter of Henry Fearing, who was the was the owner and resident of this house uh, in the second half of the 1800s. Hmm, okay. This is General R. R. Dawes and his wife, Mary Beeman Gates Dawes, who were the parents of Charles Gates Dawes, hmm. who, who did become Vice President of the United States. This good lady is Mrs. Sarah Cutler Dawes. She is the mother of, of Mrs. General Dawes. Excuse me, she's General Dawes' mother. I'm, okay. I'm sorry, I misspoke. General Dawes' mother, and then her father, in turn, was Judge Ephraim Cutler, mm -hmm. one of our early settlers and, and prominent figures, and she was the granddaughter of Manasseh Cutler, who negotiated the for the Ohio Company of Associates the purchase of land here that resulted in the Marietta community. Hmm. The the remaining couple here are Mr. and are Beeman Gates, yeah, and his wife Betsy Shipman Gates, and they were the parents of of Mrs. Dawes, and the grandparents of Charles Gates Dawes. Okay, and they had a large part in Marietta history too. Okay, and the setting of this picture is not this house, but is in front of the Dawes house on 4th Street 
two houses up from the St. Mary's uh, Basilica and presently owned and, and occupied by Dr. Hershey. Uh, this is a picture of Charles Gates Dawes as he looked when he was vice president. Um, as a middle-aged adult and the artist um, painted his portrait as though it were a sculpture. Okay. Uh, and it would shows the back of his head in a mirror to the yeah. left, as well as the front of his head, his face, um, in, in the middle of the picture. Yeah, that's kind of unique, isn't it? Mm-hmm. It is a sculpture. It is a, well, in the back, the, the front of him, that is a sculpture. Uh -huh. in the mirror. We have one story involving Charles Gates Dawes being in this house. Okay. You see? And that was the, uh, uh, before he married Cairo Blimer, but a before they married, but after they, they he was very interested in her. Right. And he was visiting here in Marietta, his parents, and the, and she was here visiting with her grandparents. Keep your hand low, Kirk. If your hand is getting in the way of the lens of the camera. Uh, you're fine. It points, it's good to point who you're talking about, so. She was, uh, his wife, Cairo Blimer, was visiting here with, with her parents. Uh-huh. And, they, and of course they were visiting her grandfather, Henry Fearing, in this house. And Charles Gates Dawes here wanted to call on her while he was here in Marietta, you see. Yeah. Wanted another contact with her. And we, we know this story because this lady wrote a letter about it. That is, Charles' grandmother wrote a letter describing this story mm -hmm. uh, to the sister of this lady, and that letter survived, and we have it. Hmm. Here? Yes, yeah, she wrote the, she lived in Marietta, she wrote to her daughter who lived in Illinois, describing what I'm going to tell you, mm -hmm. okay? So the, at that time, the hey, can I ask a quick question? Yes. I know that uh, VP uh, Charles Doss uh, lived in Illinois. Um, did did, did Kara, Kara have family there? Yes, they had children there. This, so was, you, this is their first child. Oh. Okay. Well, yeah, that's they had their child there. Okay. Well, I know you said that lady over there lived already lived in Illinois. I didn't know if she had other. Oh, no. Family already there. No, no the, it was simply a coincidence oh, okay, okay. That, 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 that his aunt, the younger yeah. sister of his mother, okay. and her husband have, were living in Illinois at that time. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I was just curious if that might, that might have been a, uh, maybe an influence of what may have drawn him there, perhaps. I don't know. I've never heard that. The... Mm -hmm. the, the um, in fact, they were returning from Illinois uh, not too long after this, and then and then they lived. That was Mr. William W. and Mrs. Betsy Mills. Mm -hmm. They returned to Marietta and lived here the remainder of their lives uh, from Illinois. Oh, they did. Yes, they went to. He was a banker, and he had his early banking experience in a in a town in Illinois. Then right, right. He, he, he grew up here, Mr. Mills, had an early job in Illinois. And Mr. Re Mills? Mr. William Mills, who was Mr. Gates here, the mother of Mrs. Dawes. Mr. Gates was the president of the Marietta National Bank. And when he retired, mm -hmm. yeah. His son-in-law, William W. Mills, mm -hmm. 
came to Marietta to succeed him mm -hmm. and then was president of the bank until he died. Okay. Also. Hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And that was the uncle by marriage of Charles Dawes. Okay. Okay. So then, but, but getting back to their early courtship right here at this house. Yeah. In those days, it wasn't a simple thing of calling up and saying, would you like to get together or anything like that. It was a, because it wasn't considered appropriate for unmarried people to be together unchaperoned. So there was communication between the two families. And it was decided that, that Yes, Charles would come here to call on the woman that he was in love with, Cairo Blimer, mm -hmm. but he would be accompanied by his mother, hmm. Mrs. Dawes, and his grandmother, Mrs. Gates. Okay. And Cairo, would, of course, would be here with the participation of, of her mother and her grandfather. So the, uh, according to Mrs. Gates' letter, they had a wonderful time. Yeah. And the, and this visit took place in, in these two rooms here, downstairs rooms. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they subsequently did marry, and they had uh, over 50 happy years of marriage. It was a very mm -hmm. successful marriage. And as you uh, mentioned earlier, there. Their married life was in Evanston, Illinois. Okay. Uh, we're now in the parlor of the Fearing House. Okay. The, the room that, uh, where they, where when this meeting took place between Charles Gates Dawes and his wife to be, mm -hmm. probably took place in this room. Mm -hmm. Although we don't know for certain whether this room or that room, but probably this room, which was the parlor, devoted to, and the purpose of the parlor was to have a room uh, where company could be received that was ready at all times to, to receive company. Yeah, okay. And the, on the, this is a, an, an organ in a piano case here, mm -hmm. and the, and there's a piece of printed music called Melody by Charles G. Dawes. Mm -hmm. And one of the, uh, Mr. Dawes had a lot of interests, and one thing he enjoyed, though, was music. Mm -hmm. And he actually composed a few numbers himself. Okay. And somewhere along the line, he composed something he called Melody. And he... Uh, Many years passed, you see, and he was uh, uh, roughly 90 years old, and somebody picked this up, Melody, and w w was attracted to it and published it, and it became a hit tune it, r r around 1950. At the, at the very end of Mr. Dawes' life. Mm -hmm. He died in 1951. And that the this was the the last part of his life that the that, that attracted public attention was this piece that he'd composed some years before okay. hit the charts and they uh, became known all over the United States as a hit tune. What was the name of the tune? Uh, sorry, I can't tell you offhand. I the song was called "It's All in the Game." Oh, okay. It's all in the game? Mm-hmm. So it starts, many a tear has to fall, but it's all in the game, I think is how the song starts. Hmm. A lot of people have recorded it. So this is the Vice President Charles Gates Dawes who wrote music in the Fearing House. 